Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. I'm Nigel. Today we're going to be talking about the newly released M3 iMac. Now, I currently own the M1 iMac and I'll be honest with you, I have had zero difficulties getting this thing to perform everything we've thrown at it. This computer gets used by myself, my wife, as well as the kids. This is where they sit down to do their studies, get their homework finished, and do their online curriculum, things like that. So clearly a lack of performance was not my motivator for moving on to this M3. Rather, I wanted to see if after these couple years have passed that they have finally refreshed this. Was it a worthwhile refresh? Did they do enough to warrant someone such as yourself or myself who does currently own an M1 iMac, is it worth upgrading? Do we need that additional performance? We'll find out. Stick around. Let's get this thing figured out. Okay, let's do a quick unboxing and see what that experience is like. You have some extremely interesting packaging with this iMac. It's really cool the way that these sides pop open. And here we are with the accessories. Of course, this is the green iMac. So you have this really soft green color on the keyboard, the mouse. Ew, the mouse, really quick. Is there anybody out there? Let me know in the comments. Do any of you like the Magic Mouse? Is there even one person? If you can convince me that you genuinely enjoy the experience of using your Magic Mouse, get my Magic Mouse shipped to you at my expense, no questions asked. Drop it in the comment below. <laughs> now, the keyboard on the other hand, I don't have a problem with. I've been using it for so long. I think the keys feel just fine. It's not my favorite, but it gets the job done. Okay, now let's get the obvious out of the way. The display. They have the same resolution. They have the same peak knit brightness. They have the same 4.5K resolution. They look fantastic. But has there been any kind of an upgrade between the two from this M1 iteration to the M3? Simple answer is no. I think in reality, what they did is they had a crap load of 24 inch iMac chassis with the screen already inside of it. And they went, hmm, let's plop an M3 in this thing. Dunzo. Okay, quick commercial interruption. I would like to ask you to help me achieve my goal of hitting 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Now, I think it might actually be possible, and the only way to get it done is with your help. So, if you could hit that thumbs up button so that this video will get spread out to a much wider audience, please share it with your friends and family. Thumbs up, subs, back to the video. Now, I didn't spend a ton of time on the audio quality of the M1 or the M3 iMac. I don't think it's all that impressive. Um, Apple does boast a six speaker array that is compatible with spatial audio in both the M1 and M3. In my personal opinion, it sounds fine. It'll get the job done, but I would still much rather have on my AirPods Pro or my AirPods Max. Basically any headphone on the planet is going to do a much better job than these do. We're gonna try to kill two birds with one stone on this next one. I'm going to import some 4K footage from the Thunderbolt 3 port on this M1 iMac, and then we're gonna do that same import with that exact same footage on the Thunderbolt 4 compatible port on the M3 iMac. That is a wordy sentence. Making sure that we are indeed going into the Thunderbolt port on this computer, and let's go ahead and hit a timer here and see what we end up with. Okay, let's take our dongle, love that word, and move it from our M1 over to our new M3 iMac and see if there's an improvement in speed here. Pause, quick wardrobe change. Just kidding, I'm actually editing this footage and I realized that what I captured of the stopwatch when doing this performance test between these two Thunderbolt ports, um, I lost it. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, so instead, I'm gonna go ahead and flash that information up onto the screen. There you go. All right, now all of our 4K footage is imported into both of our machines, and let's just sort of move through it and see what it feels like. Um, a lot of times when you have some really high resolution footage here, when scrubbing through the timeline, it can get a little choppy and unresponsive. We don't have any additional layers on here or any cuts or transitions, but that's not necessarily what it takes to get this processor to get overloaded or the RAM usage to be overused and to you know show that when trying to navigate through the timeline, it can be choppy. And with that being said, M1 is still killing it. It's doing great. And here we are with the M3. 
kind of just moving around, clicking through the footage a little bit. What you would see oftentimes with 4K footage on older Mac hardware, say for instance, the Intel based hardware, if you would move your playhead to a new position and hit spacebar to then of course start the footage, there would be a delay before it would start, it might have some skipping or dropped frames. And of course you're seeing none of that with any of the Apple Silicon. Your results may vary. How complex are your final cut projects? That will change dramatically. And I think for most people, we're not gonna notice. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get Steam installed on both of these machines real quick. And I'm hoping that there will be a relatively new AAA game with Mac compatibility in my library. Okay, here we go, Tomb Raider. What you have here is the M1 iMac set to max resolution with high settings enabled and Oh, okay, well, it actually looks like it failed. Um, it was trying to use too much RAM and it went ahead and said, no, thank you, sir. Let's go ahead and terminate you. So we were trying to push this M1 a little too hard with that maxed out resolution. So let's drop that in half now. It already appears to be doing considerably better. Duh, of course it would be. It's half the resolution. And it looks like we passed, of course, just shy of 30 FPS. And being that this is certainly not optimized in any way to run on Apple Silicon, Apple M1 actually was able to do it. 2K resolution, high settings. And now let's test out the M3. Let's see what this thing's got in store. Okay, so here we are running the Tomb Raider benchmark at the highest resolution possible, 4.5K at the same high settings. Doesn't seem to be dropping frames as badly as the M1 was. So. I actually have a little bit of confidence that this benchmark is going to be able to finish this time around. Okay, and there you have it. Not a very good result. It did finish the benchmark, but the result is certainly not playable. Let's do the same we did with the M1. Let's drop the resolution in half. <laughs> Let's see how it does. Now, this appears to be pretty smooth, um, relatively similar, maybe a little bit higher for the M3. <laughs> okay, these are the results. It is like not even a frame faster. <laughs> if you were considering moving on to an M3 as a result of all this recent talk about the graphical prowess of this new chip, I would say don't do it because the differences are negligible and the games that are optimized for it are not coming in by the truckload, guys. There's not many. Okay, so what's it all about at the end of the day? I think that the iMac is an amazing desktop computer. I think when it comes to myself, my kids, we have created a space that makes us more productive. My children are more productive, so much so that they recognize it instinctually and fight over who gets to do their work in that space. That's saying something. But with all that said, is there any necessity for a person such as myself with an M1 iMac to then move on to an M3 iMac. I do not believe so. Now there are certainly those of you out there that are doing more resource intensive work. I don't think that's many of you if I'm being honest. Most people are gonna browse the web, type up a document, have a Zoom call, kids will do homework, maybe play the occasional Apple Arcade game and that's it. The M1 can still do all of that stuff easily. Now, if you are someone who is interested in getting a new iMac, perhaps you're someone with an old Intel based iMac, or you don't have a desktop at all, and you're feeling maybe motivated by what I said about creating a really cool workspace where you can be motivated and get more done. Well, in that case, the M3 is a fantastic option. It's a great computer. It's going to do amazing work for you for years to come. Anyway, those are my thoughts. M3 iMac, absolutely amazing piece of hardware but m1 imac also a very amazing piece of hardware and that's the bottom line apple you've made another great product but i'm just not seeing the necessity to bring this thing into my home quite yet so i'm keeping my m1 and that's what i would recommend to those of you out there that have an m1 as well that brings us to the end another video down hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and hopefully you hit that subscribe and that thumbs up button for me that's it for me until next time, thanks again for being here. I hope you have an amazing night wherever you are.